Yes, folks, the biggest security threat is when you open your mouth to speak. And this is not as simplistic as many of you think, so don't click away. This is one of the most important topics I've covered in videos and a hidden threat that's building to be one of the worst places for a privacy and security risk for all. And so far, no one cares. The culprit is the understanding of how voice recognition works. Apparently, most people don't really have any idea, nor do they have any idea that the clamoring for this tech has built the most elaborate surveillance infrastructure in the world. Well, suffice it to say that I use a de-googled phone right now, right here, and this does not have voice recognition whatsoever. So those in love with their Google, Androids, and iPhones, stay tuned and learn if that's really a phone in your pocket. I post my videos ahead of YouTube on the platform Odyssey. I have a link in the description for you to follow me there in this new uncensored platform. This is an insurance policy for me in case someone cuts me out. Amazingly, in spite of my warnings over the years, people have flocked to voice assistants like Alexa, Siri, Google Assistant, Cortana, and others. You think this is going to be a rant about Alexa, but there's a punchline here that most people have not realized, so just hang on. Here's the other surprising fact. Most people have no realization that most speech-to-text apps are actually just based on the infrastructure of the four tech superpowers, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft. So if you think downloading a different Android app means that is not Google, think again. And using voice technology for any application is as simple as connecting to the Amazon Alexa infrastructure if you want to skip Google, Apple, or Microsoft. Basically, very few companies write voice recognition software anymore. Back in the old days, there were two companies well known for voice recognition technology. One is Dragon, and the other one was Kurzweil. These are still used in professional settings like healthcare dictation and voice recognition. The old way of doing voice recognition required loading huge programs from Dragon or Kurzweil into Windows computers and they used up a lot of CPU. Definitely not something that was feasible on phones. And these old programs were limited to English at the time and they were already huge. Think about today when hundreds of languages support it. Also, when used on a phone, speech-to-text has to be always on, so it would have been an unrealistic battery hog. With a big CPU requirement, lots of storage needed, a plugged-in environment was the only way to do voice recognition. Phones with voice would not have been possible, and a cheap Alexa Echo would not have been possible. The solution came in the form of cloud-based voice recognition. Huge computers in the cloud can process all the voice input. All a device has to do was to send a WAV file or sound file to the cloud, just a few kilobytes per second, and then the big computers can do the voice recognition and then send the results back over the internet. Because of the economies of scale, these big servers can handle millions and millions of users and hundreds of languages since storage is unlimited. So let me run through the process here so you understand. All the technologies using cloud-based voice recognition work the same way. The only thing your mobile device or the tiny computer in Alexa Echo does is to capture voice through a microphone and then periodically send the traffic to the cloud, to the host server. The voice file is then stored on the hard drive of the cloud provider, meaning Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. The voice files are then queued for processing by the voice recognition AI. A result in text is returned, depending on the context, if it's a command, a query, or dictation, and then that is then returned to the listening app on the mobile device. Some things to observe here. First, the phone itself uses very little resources to do this. This is why even a cheap computer in Alexa Echo works fine. Second, the voice files are stored. Third, the transcription of the voice into text is stored. There is no dispute about this. All the terms of use and all the platforms clearly state what is stored. They store the voice files, they store the transcription. 
There's no time limit given to what they store. I've read all the terms of service for voice on all these platforms and they all say the same thing. Now Amazon Echo adds something different lately. It gives you a way to supposedly review your recordings and then delete it at will. It is not clear if deleting it deletes the voice files, the transcription, or both. Maybe that's the point to not make that clear. But we won't belabor that. That is not the biggest issue that I will talk about. Fourth, the apps you use share the same speech recognition engine in the app. So on Android, for example, it uses the Android TTS engine. So if you download any voice recognition app, they just use the built-in Android TTS engine and all your voice goes to the same place, which is Google. Now, the app may keep a copy of it for themselves, but definitely Google and Apple have it. So don't feel that because an app isn't a Google-owned app that somehow it is more private. I just need you all to understand that it goes to the same TTS engine on that OS. How does this compare to Alexa, by the way? Mostly Alexa is used for voice commands. So the fear in Alexa is that the ambient sounds and voices can be captured and people in your house can be voice printed and it will capture parts of the conversation that you may not have intended to be captured. But to be honest, even Alexa's already dark usage is not even the biggest threat. And it's pretty bad as it is. Well, what is the big issue? On a phone, the voice assistant is used to make web queries, some commands like calling. But the biggest issue of all is that many, many, many people do voice dictation on many apps. So you may be using Signal. You may be using WhatsApp. You may be using Facebook Messenger. You may be creating a Facebook post. You may be texting. What What the heck are you thinking when you dictate your post? But, 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 I want to respond while I'm driving. But, but, I don't type well. Yes, I have heard it all. Okay, if you're handicapped, you don't have a choice. But for the majority of the population, do you think doing voice dictation is benign? Fortunately, not everyone dictates, but if you have the inclination to start this as a new habit, don't. Do you have any idea of the consequences of dictating your text post on a mobile device? Alexa Echo is bad, really bad. But to be honest, the worst of all is to dictate your messages because it has more content than an Alexa command. Let's think about the effects of this in case you've missed the thought process so far. There you are possibly using encrypted apps like Signal, WhatsApp, and others, or maybe even doing email, and you deliberately send a copy of that message to Apple and Google by dictation. What the heck, guys? Your dictation is sent in the open, unencrypted, transcribed, stored possibly permanently. Oh my gosh, what a bounty for these companies. Not only do they have troves of information about your political beliefs, opinions, your love life, your business dealings, you create a giant database that can be shared with three-letter agencies if they're searching for people with a certain viewpoint. By the way, all this data is attached to your device fingerprint with your Apple ID and Google ID. Let me talk about two other gotchas of the voice capture problem that go even beyond someone listening in. The first is called the voice print. I'm going to post the article by The Intercept about how voice printing is the new tracking method used by the three-letter agencies. A voice print is a biometric. It is unique to you. The use of voice printing was made apparent as a modern technique when some Iraq war documents were declassified. Back during the Iraq war, they used voice print recognition to scar for Saddam Hussein. Today, they use it to find targets around the world. Three-letter agencies have listening posts on the internet on carrier voice systems pretty much anywhere that can identify a targeted individual who speaks and is captured on a microphone. The technology has apparently evolved and is extremely advanced and hush-hush. The precise technology used is not known, so it is not even certain if voice changers can stop identification. All we know is that today, in modern times, it is much more advanced than we can imagine. Think about the implication of this. The moment you pick up your phone and talk, something lights up at a three-letter agency and they can easily know who you are. Yes, I can hear the quips now. No one is going to listen to every call. 
use your head. Obviously, an AI can perform the ID in an instant and match it to the phone number or some other identifier, like IP address. And this is why burner phones are pretty useless. You can be recognized by your voice print and who you call. There's a law, by the way, that prevents three-letter agencies from recording all conversations in the USA. Although the law does not apply outside of the US or if someone is speaking to a foreign national. But the metadata would include the voice print of the people on the call and phone numbers, time of call, length of call, frequency, and so on, plus a relationship map. And here's the other rub. There's no law that prevents the three-letter agencies from listening to captured voice traffic or transcriptions made by private companies. So Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon now have giant databases of voice record. Only Apple said they deleted. Apparently, they said after six months. Now, that was a policy from years ago. I don't know if that's their current policy. But who says the voice print needs to be stored at a three-letter agency? To skirt laws, they could just lease the information from Apple, Google, and Amazon. I'm implying that maybe there's a voice print stored with these companies. I don't know. You have signed off your rights by using these voice capture and recognition systems. You have signed off on your willingness for them to store it permanently or as long as these companies desire. Again, you didn't read the TOS. Let me tell you the second gotcha, and that's ultrasound capture. I've talked about this in another recent video. As I said in that ultrasound video, your microphone can capture sounds that humans cannot hear, and these are the sounds in the 18 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz range. Some entity could potentially place ultrasound beacons at various public locations, and if you have a mic on on your phone listening to the wake up word, it will be checking that on the cloud servers. The sound captured on audio could then identify a location where you are near. So without your knowledge, the ambient sound could contain data, which you cannot hear, but will be in the recording. Watch that video on ultrasound to understand the other implications of this. So those constantly using their phones as a dictation machine all day add another risk to their activities. Let me tell you, voice recognition or speech to text is the biggest boon to the surveillance state even bigger than facial recognition because you are actually passing your thoughts to the man. And of course, because this is a phone, you're also asking Siri and Google some web queries of various sorts, just like you do with Alexa. It gets worse. Do you have one of those home appliances that are voice activated? Do you really think your refrigerator or toaster or coffee maker has the CPU necessary to do full voice recognition? Of course not. Chances are your voice recognizing IoT devices use Amazon Alexa or the Google TTS engine. Remember, the apps cannot provide their own speech recognition engines. Aside from the complexity of the task, there are hundreds of languages they have to support, and the databases required for these languages is humongous. Now we have Android Auto. So again, everyone is getting super excited about the possibilities. This is not something I get excited about at all. Android Auto will use the cloud to translate every command. Fortunately, my car has its own voice recognition software and it is not connected to the internet. So that is fine to use. When you start using your self-driving cars like Tesla, just be aware that it is always connected to the internet. Tesla's voice recognition goes where? Make a guess. Probably Amazon. Practically all cloud-based speech recognition will go to Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. It takes a lot of resources to develop your own voice-to-text AI. There may be a few exceptions. I saw a paid Dragon service called Dragon Anywhere, which costs $150. Since Dragon is a professional transcription tool, it has much more advanced editing commands. Perhaps this uses a Dragon speech database, but of course, it would be easier for them to just use the built-in TTS engine and interface it with their editing commands. Maybe someone who uses Dragon Anywhere can tell us. Definitely, their desktop apps are not cloud-based, at least not when I was using it. One thing about dictation is that it is a continuous text stream of ideas. These are not short Siri queries. Entire text messages being captured and no one is wondering how that is being encrypted. Oh, well, obviously it has to be readable to, to the text-to-speech AI, so it arrives completely unencrypted. 
One other thing to remind you of, I have to remind people with kids of this every year, do not give your kids some talking doll or some such things. It's basically an Alexa Echo in a toy. Whatever your kids are saying are being stored and are theoretically in violation of COPPA, COPPA laws in the US for kids 13 and under. But apparently the FCC is being lenient about this. However, don't support this kind of technology for kids. Besides, the toy will hear the people in the background and the more data can be collected. Would you willingly plant a listening device in your home? Well, here we are in 2020 and apparently we are now happy to do this. One of the main ingredients in the Orwellian world of 1984. Now let's talk about the solution to this. Obviously, you can deny microphone permission to apps that may use the TTS engine of the Apple or Google device. But the TTS engine is still there on the phone, meaning if you didn't pay attention to some app you just installed, it may have used the TTS engine in some way. The good news is that a de-Google phone, meaning an AOSP ROM with no gaps, Android open source project with no gaps, has no TTS engine. Google did not open source this. So we poor users of the Google phones have no speech recognition abilities whatsoever. So some of you are saying, oh, that's too bad. Then I would never get a the Google phone. I, on the other hand, am very happy. A the Google phone has no connection to Google. So it is not able to pass my voice to their database. Another check in the privacy list. Yes, people, we have to go Luddite on some things. There are just ones that are serious threats like Alexa and any kind of cloud voice recognition. And this is one area I will never give in to. I will never willingly put a listening device in my house. Sorry, no voice recognition for me. Unless, of course, they make a chip that can do the voice recognition directly on the device and leave it off the cloud. By the way, they did that with facial recognition on iOS, so it's doable. I get many of my video ideas from all of you and when you leave questions and make comments below. I do try to answer most, which of course is hard when this channel is getting bigger, but please keep leaving those comments because it guides me and I appreciate it. I hope I taught you a few things today. If you want to learn more about these privacy issues, please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. I also have a live stream on Fridays for Q&A. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, this channel can only run with your help on Patreon or buying my products from the store. I do not survive off Google ads, just so you know. See you next time.